the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the game day preview. The Eels are taking on the Manly Sea Eagles at Brookvale Oval. Well, it is called Four Points Park now, but... I like to call it Brookvale because, you know, that's the traditional name, I guess, um, that I grew up watching rugby league from, and that's what I called the uh, uh, Brookvale Oval. That's what I called the Oval, Brookvale Oval. Uh, But it is Four Pines Park due to a sponsorship deal, so that's what I will call it, Four Pines Park. What do you call it? Four Pines Park or Brookvale Oval? Anyway, the Eels are playing there. Friday night tonight uh, at 8 p.m. And look, I couldn't get a Manly Sea Eagles fan again uh, for the podcast for a game day preview. So, look, I'm going to give it a crack myself again. I hope you enjoyed last week's game day preview uh, that I did about the Eels v Dolphins uh, game last week. Didn't that one turn out? Uh, really well for the Eels. But anyway, uh, I'm doing it again. So if you like this one, please give it a five-star rating and review. Uh, That'd be great. Or send me a message and let me know your thoughts on this sort of a game day preview. Do you like this one or do you prefer the ones with fans of other clubs? Anyway, to this game. And it is, here we go again, Manly and Para. Uh, Look, Parramatta and Manly have played 150 times for Parramatta have won 58 times, 88 losses, 4 draws. Now at Brookvale Oval, uh, you would expect that Manly have got a significant advantage there. They have won 54 times, Parramatta 22 times in 77 matches. The last time they played at Brookvale, it was a 34-30 win to the Manly Seagulls. That was in round three of 2023. And look, from memory, I think Josh Schuster, who's been in the news in the last couple of weeks, who has now been released from the club. uh, From memory, I think he had a blinder in that game, set up a couple of tries in that game. I think one of them was a... A uh, little chip kick for Hamoli Olakawatu uh, to score, but he had an absolute blinder. So he showed in that game the ap- absolute potential that he does have and that we keep on hearing from from the people that have seen him at training and in junior grades and playing for Manly. So uh, he does have that potential that everyone keeps on talking about because he showed it in that game against Parramatta last year. Uh, Josh Hodgson, uh, who he's now retired from playing in the game, he scored a runaway try. I think it was about 20 or 30 metres. I think he took a quick tap and just took off. And, um, yeah, I think he might have thrown a dummy and gone. Scored a try, so... A good one for him there. The last time the Eels won at Brookvale was 2022, round 21. So the grand final year for the Eels. And the halfback for the Parramatta Eels on that occasion, it wasn't Mitchell Moses like it is this weekend as well. It was Jake Arthur. Uh, He was the halfback for the Eels that night. And... Again, from memory in that game, I think he had a blinder as well. I think he scored, uh, threw out a uh, one of his. He had a try assist with a pass uh, that was fairly 
good. Uh, I think it was like a cutout pass, and uh, one of the wingers, I think it was Michael Sivo, uh, scored a try there. And uh, that was during the time when, unfortunately, Eels fans were giving him a hard time and uh, were booing him on the field. So uh, that was during that time in 2022. Uh, but certainly that night, he had a blinder. Um, he was one of the best in that game from memory um, and had a couple of try assists. But he is now the 19th man for the Manly Seagulls in this game. He made that change, I think it was last year, um, to the Manly Seagulls. And he's had a couple of games in first grade, but uh, mostly New South Wales Cup. Uh, and look, it's a good move for him, I thought, I thought at the time as well. He was stuck behind Mitchell and Dylan Brown and also the, I guess, the constant booing did get to him. And look, it was uh, not fair on him, absolutely not fair on him, not fair on his family either. Um, and that's probably what drove him out of the club. And we probably see... At the moment, this year, young Matt Arthur, who is a hooker for the Parramatta Eels in New South Wales Cup, potentially he may not be getting a start in first grade because of that same reason. And maybe Brad Arthur is holding him back uh, because he doesn't want to see a repeat of that just at this stage. It might not be the reason, but it could contribute to that. Look, one game that stands out in my memory and probably for the wrong reasons, absolutely it was, was back in 2018. It was about a 40 degree heat uh, uh, that day. It was round number two in 2018. And look, it was a the way the reason it stands out for me is because that season I ended up going to every single game home and away. Um, but also it was the second loss of the season for Parramatta. I think they lost six the, their first six games that year, and it was 54 points to nil. Manly won that game. I think Mitchell Moses got sin bin twice in that game, so the halftime lead was 30 nil. Um so that one certainly sticks out. But I guess Parramatta fans, they would like to remember back to 82-83, the grand final wins. Uh, look, there has been other great wins since 2005. I think it was... Uh, sorry, two, yeah, 2005, I think it might have been. Uh, Parramatta Stadium. And Parramatta gave Manly a bit of a touch-up in that final series there. There was another game that I went to at the Sydney Cricket Ground between Manly and Parramatta. Unfortunately, Manly won that game, uh, but it was great to see Manly and Parramatta back at the SCG um, that day. Um, what other games for Manly and Parramatta stick out in your memory, listeners? Let me know which games stand out for you. Uh, look, another one that stands out, for me, was actually this year as well. So Manly and Parramatta played in round three. It was a 28 points to 24 win to the home side, which was Parramatta, obviously, at Combank Stadium. Look, Manly were up 14-0 pretty early, and at the time, us Eels fans were thinking, oh, no, what's going on here? What is going on? Um, and they were up 14-0, but... Uh, look, Parramatta dug deep. They dug deep that day. It showed a bit of resilience, which they haven't shown in the last couple of days, a uh, couple of days, couple of weeks, especially the last two, three weeks. Um, uh, one of the shining lights that day was Blaze Talangi scoring a try in his NRL debut in front of all his family and friends. Uh, there was heaps of them there at the game that day, so it was great to see him get a try. And what a try it was. It was just basically run over the top of Tom Travojevic. So 
I don't think you've ever seen that before, and I probably don't think you'll see that ever again, to be quite honest. Um, the young kid, he really backed himself and just got over that, got over Tommy and then scored that try, so well done to Blaze there. Since then, he's played a couple of other games in first grade, but unfortunately he's not playing in this game. He's been relegated back to New South Wales Cup. He is not even 18th or 19th man, so... That is a little bit of a disappointment. Parramatta fans have been wanting him to be in the side somewhere. Um, look, I probably would have put him on the wing uh, instead of Mike Acevo, um, and then potentially rotate with Clint Gutherson at the back there in attack and defence and just uh, give that kid more experience because maybe it could be the potential that... Blaze could become the long-term fullback for Parramatta once Clint Gutherson either moves position as he gets older or he retires, so it could be Blaze in that position. Uh, look, there was a bit of controversy in that game as well where Manly were just allowed a try for a Jake Travojevic obstruction, Luca Moretti. He was the obstructed one in that game. There was a lot of controversy about that one, whether... He was being lazy in defence and used Jake as an obstruction to get the penalty, uh, which was a no try anyway. So, uh, look, he was probably playing to the rules there, and it was ruled no try there. That was when Manly were on a bit of a comeback, and um, they nearly dagged that win. So, thankfully, they didn't, uh, because wins have been few and far between for the Eels this season. Look, to the season so far, and look, a few stats for you. And Manly has scored 181 points this season at an average of 25.8 points. Call it 26 points. Uh, the Eels, 139 points for 19, on uh, an average at 19.8 points. So basically, sort of like a converted try, the difference there. Now, the defence is a little bit concerning for both sides as well, uh, considering where they find themselves on the ladder. And I guess uh, for the rest of the season, for Manly, they sit in fifth position on the ladder at the moment. The Eels are down in 14th position at the moment. Um, So uh, a little bit concerning, potentially the defence is the reasonings for this one. But anyway, Manly, 156 points. They have leaked at an average of 22.2 points. So uh, I think Richie Benno would like that one, 22.2 points. Uh, Parramatta, on the other hand, 180 points for an average of 25.7. So we all know that... 85 of those points have come in last three weeks with that loss against the Canberra Raiders, 41 on that occasion, and 44 against the Dolphins last week. So two games there, for over 40 points scored by the opposition. Completion rate, mainly 76%, the Eels 80%, so completion rates are always crucial for a victory. If you don't have the ball, you won't score points, obviously, and uh, if you do have the ball, there's a very good chance you will score points, so... That's one thing in the Eels' favour at the moment this year. This year is the completion rate at 80%. And the look, obviously, Manly, they have the upper hand when it comes to playing games at Brookvale Oval with a 61% uh, win rate and the Eels a 39% win rate there at Brookvale Oval. Look, to... to um, Friday night's game, tonight's game, the Seagulls, as I said, they sit in fifth position on the ladder. The Eels are 14th, so a crucial game for both clubs. Obviously, the Seagulls want to stay in touch with that top four. The Eels, they've had a bit of a form stop the last couple of weeks. They had a win against the Cowboys in between two floggings by Canberra and the Dolphins, so... 
Coach Brad Arthur during the week has called, and on the press conference against the Dolphins game after that one, he did call his side a part-time footy side, so they will be out to prove a point, that is for sure. And look, it's a pretty special round, this one. It is Anzac round uh, at the time of this recording, which is actually Thursday night. It is Anzac Day, the 25th of April. So this is the NRL's Anzac round. And you will see pretty much every side this weekend compete in their Anzac jerseys. Now, if you have a listen to the podcast a few weeks ago. I had Tom from Retro Rugby League on, uh, and we went through the Eels Anzac jersey, uh, the ins, the out, the, the, the design of it, the meaning of it, the meaning of the various points that are on the jersey. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a bad-looking jersey, um, and I like the stories behind it. And it is available now uh, in various places, including Parramatta Leagues Club as well. So in the club shop there, as well as your Jack's Pale Ale as well, available in the club club shop as well. A uh, bit of a plug there for the major sponsor. Um, Manly, if you want to know more about the Manly Anzac jersey, then head to Retro Rugby League on Instagram. Um, give him a follow as well. Tom is a great bloke. Give him a follow. And uh, he would have done a post about the Sea Eagles Anzac jersey as well. I cannot remember seeing it, so I do not know what it looks like, but I'm sure there has been a bit of thought go into that one. And uh, But he will have all the story about the jersey as well. So... Um, Head over to Instagram, check out Retro Rugby League, give him a follow, uh, he'll have the story there. But anyway, only the one game on the Friday night due to three on Anzac Day, so this is the only game being played, so this is your only chance to watch Rugby League on a Friday night, so millions, millions of viewers will be watching this one, and... To the sides, look, we'll start with the home side. First of all, obviously, Tom Travojevic at fullback, Jason Saab, uh, Kula and Garrick in the centres, Tommy Talao at winger, Luke Brooks and Daly Cherry Evans are the half 5 8 combination. Daniela Paseca and Josh Aloye are the props, Lachlan Croker, Hooker, Homoli Olukawatu and Corey Waddell, second rowers, Jacob Vojevic is the lock. For, on the interchange bench for the Manly Sea Eagles, Carl Lawton, Ethan Bullimore, Matthew Lodge and Nathan Brown, former Parramatta Eels player uh, and also Parramatta, uh, Sydney Roosters player, uh, West Tigers player, South Sydney Rabbitohs player, but his last... Uh, second last club was the Parramatta Eels, so definitely for sure he will be out to prove a point against his old club and obviously his old coach as well. I'm not too sure what happened between those two. Uh, they looked like they had a little bit of a falling out. Nathan had a few injuries as well, apparently, I think, so, and also maybe a little bit of a falling out as well, but he is now playing on... For Manly, he's been playing some pretty good footy this year for the Sea Eagles off the bench. I think it looks like he may get another uh, deal at Manly for next year now that Josh Schuster has left the club. So a little bit of money has been freed up there. So I think he was on a training trial deal there this year. So uh, he may find himself maybe getting a one or two year deal but he is playing some great footy there for the Parramatta side a few changes from last week's thrashing against the Dolphins Clint Gutherson, Clint Gutherson at fullback the king he uh, looked like he had a bit of a knee injury last week he's been carrying that for a long time apparently had to have fluid drained from it before the game and Look, uh, some people have said that he would probably be, uh, it'd probably be worthy for him to do a, have a week, maybe two weeks off. So, uh, look, potentially, if he has this week off, 
Parramatta's got the bye next week, so that's two weeks in a row uh, that he can have the week off. So, yeah, that would be a great thing for him just to freshen up a little bit and then come back for the rest of the season. But uh, he is playing. He he obviously loves to play his uh, former club as well, Manly. So, as do all players, they love to play their ex-clubs. But... He wants to play. Mike Sivo earns a recall onto the wing. Will Penetzini and Morgan Harper, another former Manly player, playing his old side back at Brookvale Oval. Bailey Simonson on the wing. Now, number six for Parramatta is Ethan Sanders. He is ill number eight, four, five from memory, I think it was. So congratulations to Ethan. Now, he has been in the news uh, again, from probably the start of the year, to be honest, but definitely in the last week or two, about his um, contract. Now, uh, up until round six, it was he wasn't able to negotiate with other clubs. After that, he was, and it does now look like he will be going to the Canberra Raiders next year in 2025. Uh, I I do think that the Canberra side, now that Jamal Fogarty has unfortunately gone down with injury and he's out for three months, he, they may try to get him down there earlier. But I think Brad Arthur, Coach Brad Arthur from the Parramatta Eels has said that, no, he has said that he will honour his contract at Parramatta and play out the year 2024 at Parramatta. Uh, and then leave the club and go down to Canberra in 2025. But he gets his shot this week in first grade to make his debut. Um, So congratulations to him. Now, I haven't seen a lot of football from Ethan. I must say that I don't watch a lot of New South Wales Cup uh, just due to work commitments and, and whatever, but I do not see a lot of that. I probably should uh, watch a little bit more, especially the Parramatta side play, um, that's for sure, although they have been struggling this year. They've only won one game in New South Wales Cup and find themselves at the bottom of the ladder. Um, so some say he has some defence deficiencies, um, we saw him in the Canberra game, Canberra trial game at the start of the year. He looked a little bit uncomfortable in that game, and I think now he has he has given himself a little bit more confidence, and I think he th- feels that he is ready for that next step. So he gets that tomorrow night, Friday night, um, against the Manly Sea Eagles. Dylan Brown remains at halfback. Now, there has been talk that these guys will switch positions, even though their numbers are 6 and 7. Um, they will switch back, so Dylan will play 5-8, but Ethan will play halfback. But I think you'll find that Dylan will stay at halfback and Ethan will play 5-8, um, even though they have been named in opposite Positions for the forwards, RCG, Regan Cable-Gillard and Junior Paolo uh, are the starting props. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Junior goes back to the bench again um, with Joe Offahangawi, who is on the bench, start the game against Manly. It Look, it has been working pretty well, I think, throughout the year. I think... Uh, has made a little bit of an impact uh, when, especially when Regan comes off the field after his first stint in the game and Junior goes on, I think that you don't lose a lot of momentum and I think it has really worked and I would like to see that change happen again uh, for this game against Manly. I think, it, as I said, it has worked Keep it that way, Uh, but Junior has been named at number 10. Junior, uh, Junior. Joey Lussick at hooker. Uh, Sean Lane, Ryan Madison gets a call to the starting lineup after playing most of the year off the bench to take the place of Bryce Cartwright, who unfortunately has, I guess, that rib injury as well. So give him another week off with the bye next week as well. Jermaine Hopgood at lock. Brendan Hands earns a recall onto the bench. And 
which is good to see because, in my personal opinion, I don't think Joey Lusick is an 80-minute hooker, but we have seen Brad Arthur at the start of the year say that he will want a 80-minute hooker. So it's good to see Brennan Hands there on the interchange bench. Look, he can play 5 eighths as well, um, and obviously hooker, he can play halfback as well. Uh, so it's good to see him get another shot at NRL because I think he will be crucial coming in into the game, maybe that middle part of the game, uh, maybe when some of these manly forwards get a little bit tired, they can he can be injected into the game. Uh, Makahesi Makatoa earns a recall to first grade. It's his first game for the season this year in first grade. Joe Offa Hangawi, as I mentioned before, and Kelma Tuilagi uh, gets a start back onto the interchange bench, again playing against his former club in the Manly Seagulls. Sean Russell and Luca Moretti are the 18th and 19th men. Now, I thought Luca Moretti may have been a little bit dis- uh, sorry, uh, a little bit of a chance of getting that uh, bench spot again. Uh, I think maybe potentially Brad has sent him back to New South Wales Cup to maybe just tweak his game a little bit. He has made a couple of errors on the first time that he's had the ball uh, coming onto the field for Parramatta. So potentially that is the reason, but I would have probably had him on the bench as well because I think, yeah, give him a shot. He has been doing pretty well except those minor little errors as well. So I would have given him a shot anyway. So that's the two sides there uh, that are going to take the field. It's going to be an interesting game. I think one thing that Parramatta have to be careful of is that left edge of Manly. I think that Jason saab Cooler combination is a good one. And I think last year uh, during the game, I think at Manly... It was pretty much exposed, that left-hand side. And once they find a weakness down that side, they tend to stick to it. So I think Parramatta will have to be wary of that. We all know that uh, the wingers like to jam in and leave massive gaps on the sides of the field. But um, you can't give a player like Jason Saab that much room because he will make you pay if it's read properly he will he will make you pay with his speed down that sideline so that is one thing they're going to have to watch obviously Tom Travojevic is going to be crucial to Manly's win as we as he is every single week and uh, we'll just have to watch him wrapping around the uh, wrapping around the centre and also those midfield runs as well. Sometimes those runs from dummy half as well can be pretty damaging, so I think Parramatta will have to watch that one. Look, I said on the Talking Para podcast on Tuesday night and give them a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram uh, as well. That's a podcast that I'm involved in every single week, Five Paralabs, Talking Parramatta, the issues, uh, reviewing games, previewing games, and giving our thoughts as passionate Parramatta fans. So give them a follow and watch their live shows each and every Tuesday because they can get very, very interesting indeed. Um, And as I said, from five Parramatta fans, five passionate Parramatta fans who are passionate about the club and want them to see win and win a premiership. So uh, I did say on the Talking Para podcast, and I think this will... Uh, probably, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not disappoint, but uh, surprise. Probably surprise you, the listeners. Look, I am going to tip a manly win, okay? I am going to tip, though, that Parramatta will put in a massive showing in this game uh, and have a reply to last week's game. Look, I think they're going to play really well. I think the score, the final score, is going to be twenty to eighteen, 
it's going to be a close two points game. I think just with this defence difference uh, on average, it's only about three points difference on average. So I think it'll be a close game. I think 20 points to 18. The last time they played, it was only a four point difference. Uh, But I am going to tip a manly win now. That will surprise you and shock you. Uh, That is in a tipping in the tipping competitions anyway uh but i do think manly can win this game i just cannot see from last week's performance against the dolphins how Parramatta can win this game as i said i think they will put in a massive showing uh, and go towards a victory but i think tom travoyevich will score the winning try in the last few minutes just to get Manly ahead and end up winning the game. So I think, though, uh, and I also did tip as well, I think it could have been Olakowatu to score the first try, potentially. Um, But, I look, I hope I'm really wrong, and obviously being a Parramatta supporter, I hope that Parramatta can get the win, and, look, they need to put in a really big showing in this game, at Brookvale, uh, especially after last week's embarrassment against the Dolphins up, up in Darwin. So that's my predictions. Let me know your predictions as well, and let me know if you like this sort of game day preview, and if I cannot find a fan of another club, I can continue doing these. I might just keep on doing them anyway, because I enjoy doing them anyway. Look, I'm not an expert, I'm just a fan, so uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like them? And um, let me know your thoughts on the game as well. Enjoy the game. As I said, 8pm on Friday night, round 8. Here we go again. Manly and Para. Friday night, prime time. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go, Para. Let's get the win. And let's see what happens on a Friday night. But anyway, thank you very much for listening, and I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for another podcast this week. It'll be the uh, preview of the round from with the Duckman on Pulse FM. And look, half the round's already gone, so we're only going to be previewing four games. We'll probably be reviewing four games uh so stay tuned for that one that'll be out over the weekend as well also out now uh two podcasts that were released today uh or yesterday when this comes out it was the jason hetherington interview with uh and the interview with him former gold coast seagulls Canterbury Banks down Bulldogs player, go uh, Queensland Origin player and Australian player. So a really interesting chat with him and also my tribute to Terry Hill, the late great Terry Hill, who sadly passed away on the twenty fourth of April. So I do a little bit of a tribute in my own words. Uh, I never got to meet Terry, uh, but as I said in the uh, podcast that I, the tribute podcast that I did uh, for him, I was in the process of trying to do a podcast chat with him. So I never got to meet him. I only watched him on TV, the footy show, and him playing, and uh, watched his career. So um, still, still in a little bit of shock about that one, as is the rugby league world. So rest in peace, Terry. So enjoy your footy over the weekend. Enjoy this game. Manly and Parramatta, and may the best team win, and may that be the Parramatta Eels. We'll just have to wait and see, but go Parra! Thank you for listening to another episode of the Parakeet Podcast. See you next time.